Hi, I'm Ben, and I like plants, mushrooms, frogs, and stuff like that. We're in the peak of fall, so we're going to be going on a fall mushroom hunt before winter hits like a brick. Something that I've been trying to do is learn a new mushroom every time I go out hunting. That usually means taking a bunch of pictures and sitting in front of a book for a while. You can't learn every mushroom overnight, but you can learn a bunch slowly but surely. With that in mind, we're going to go out mushroom hunting and look for a few mushrooms that beginners should know, but we'll also take a look at some of the weird ones too. Alright then, let's see what we can find. These mushrooms are pretty much everywhere right now. In the heart of Missouri, there are oaks everywhere you look, and it seems like today, everywhere there are oaks, there are Lacaria purpurea. These mushrooms might not look like too much from above, but flip them over and you're in for a show. Lacaria purpurea is known for its bright purple gills, which are pretty. The gills are attached to the stem and look thick, purple, and waxy. The spore prints are white, so you shouldn't see too much discoloration on the stem or gills. If you see any orange spores or filamentous cortinas, you don't have a lacaria, you probably have a cortinarius. The stems and cap surface on these lacaria mushrooms are anywhere from a lilac, purpley pink to a muted brown color. If they've been out for a while, the caps will start to become flatter and get pretty pale colored. But if you find a nice young one, the caps should be nice and round, or convex, with a margin that may be rolled in towards the gills. You should also pay attention to the stem's texture. These all have some scaliness to them, or kind of like a fiberiness, almost like flakes of peeling skin. Sometimes the immature ones will end up looking a little wacky, with really thick bottoms and really tiny caps. As a last word of advice, I usually find these fruiting in scattered groups, so if you manage to spot one, look for others hiding in the leaf litter. They can blend in pretty well. These mushrooms are edible, and are considered to be pretty good. They're also pretty easy to identify, as long as you're aware of Cortinarius lookalikes, that could make you pretty sick. So watch out for orange spores and Cortinas. If everything checks out, add this mushroom to the basket, and maybe take a spore print just to be sure. Everything here seems to be glowing a bit under the yellow leaves, but this next mushroom is really out there. This is a type of coral mushroom that belongs to the genus Romeria. These mushrooms are differentiated from some of the other genera by where they grow. These are coming out of the ground exclusively, not from rotting wood. Romeria tend to have mycorrhizal relationships with trees, so it helps to pay attention to where they're growing. Some species of coral fungi are considered edible, but they can be tricky to differentiate, and enough will cause explosive diarrhea to keep me from trying them. I think this species might be Romeria formosa, which would be one of the nasty ones, so I'm steering clear. I mean, if it looks like fire, it's probably going to burn on its way back out. They are really pretty though, but we'll just leave them alone. Next up is this one. This mushroom looks like a nice flush of oyster mushrooms at a glance, but it's orange, it's stinky, and it's not a Pleurota species. So the common names Mock Orange Oyster or Stinking Orange Oyster fit pretty well. The Mock Oyster does somewhat resemble true oysters, with their large, fan-shaped caps that emerge in groups, but after that, the similarities end. Mock Oysters are really fuzzy. The caps, especially the edges, are covered in a nice, thick orange fuzz. Even the bases of some mushrooms are surrounded by little explosions of fuzzy mycelium, I really like the way they do that. If you wanted to, you could give the fuzz a pet. The caps feel pretty soft and velvety, unlike the smooth oyster mushroom caps. But if you smell your fingers, they might stink. Apparently some people's collections won't smell too much, but these ones really do. It's like a pungent, burnt, skunky kind of smell. So yeah, obviously something you don't want to eat. Underneath the caps, there are bright orange, tightly packed gills. True oysters will have gills, except they're usually a little more spaced out and white. The mock oysters don't develop much of a stem. 
They have a little bit of a base, but for the most part, they just kind of end right at the substrate, or in a poof of fuzz. Some mushrooms in this clump have no stems at all, and are just little circles of gills coming out of the log. And unfortunately, these mushrooms are not edible, but I don't think anyone is really going to make that mistake, since they smell so bad. So we'll leave these be. Goodbye, stinky fuzzy mushrooms. While this isn't a mushroom, I thought it was pretty neat. This little peeper thinks he's being sneaky, but when you have your mushroom hunting eyes on, you'll find all sorts of stuff. We should leave him because I think he might be a little spooked. Things are actually going pretty well today, since next up we have an edible one, Heresium corolloides. These mushrooms look a lot like the related lion's mane, Heresium arenaceus, and a lot of people will probably misidentify them as that species. It's not too much of a problem though, since they are both edible. This species, commonly known as the coral tooth or comb tooth mushroom, looks like a branched white coral. This mushroom here is a small lion's mane, which looks more like a perfect, round, unbranched pom-pom. So, in contrast, the coral tooth mushroom branches out into more coral-like tendrils. Each of the branches should be covered in relatively short teeth. Not sharp, bristly teeth, but soft, mushroomy ones. Some of the tendrils or branches can get pretty long, while other fruiting bodies will be super tiny and isolated. This is by far the smallest one I've seen. There's also another heresium in this area, Heresium americanum, which has much longer teeth, and in my experience, a tighter branching pattern. When they're not fully developed, it can be kind of tricky telling the difference, but don't sweat it too much, just make sure you're eating heresium. These ones are in prime condition for eating, since they're still snow white. After they've been out for a while, these mushrooms will discolor to a little bit yellow. It's not the end of the world if they're a little yellow around the edges, but they won't be as nice as the younger ones. When cooked, these mushrooms take on a sweet, seafoody kind of flavor. That's really interesting. Since Heresium corolloides mushrooms are branched so much, they do have a bit of a strange texture, and I'm still trying to figure out what to do with them besides throwing them in stir-fries. Maybe a mock linguine and clams or shrimp scampi will be the next experiment. I've had the best luck finding these on dead or dying beech trees when I was in the northeast, but they also love maple and oak just as much. Sometimes you can find these up to 15 feet in the air, and other times right at ground level. So good luck, and find a big stick to poke them down with. We've all been there before. This is another mushroom that reminds me of snow. The edges have an interesting texture, with translucent scales that kind of resemble ice crystals. This mushroom is Phlebia tremulosa, and it's one of the weird ones. When I first found it, I got really excited since it was my first time, and I thought it looked crazy, like something I'd never see again. But later on the walk, I saw it on about 12 more logs. It turns out that this is a relatively common mushroom that has a pretty large range. The mushroom surface is scaly or fuzzy, with white to pinkish flesh. Sometimes it'll look more like a crust fungus, with the spore-bearing surface laying flush with the log it's on, while at the same time, it'll push out the smallest bit of a polypore-like mushroom. This is called an effused, reflexed fruiting body. The spore-bearing surface is pretty creamy when the mushrooms are young, and turns more pink as they get older. It's kind of funky looking, with twists, folds, and wrinkles. As far as I know, this mushroom isn't edible, and it probably wouldn't have the best texture either. So we'll move on. But actually, while we're here, we might as well look at this one's cousin, which was growing nearby. This related species, Phlebia incarnata, looks pretty similar, just with a new paint job. The surface of Phlebia incarnata is a bright bubblegum pink, something that's pretty cool to see in the mushroom world. It has pretty much the same growth habit as the Phlebia tremulosa mushroom that we looked at before. The caps are even slightly velvety, with a frosty white edge. The spore-bearing surface is pretty similar too, with deep, wrinkly folds. It starts off a creamy color, but it also bruises to a yellowish color, which you should be able to see from that splotch. It's a cool-looking mushroom, but this little piece of bubblegum isn't edible, so let's see what else we can find. Perfect. 
What would a fall mushroom hunt be without some oysters? These mushrooms are true oyster mushrooms, Pleurotus ostriatus. Oyster mushrooms typically have very strongly decurrent gills. They run all the way down the stem to the base of the mushrooms. After spending some time with the stinking oyster, these mushrooms are a sight for sore noses. Actually, if you do smell these, they'll have a very specific kind of smell. Not every oyster mushroom I've come across smells like this, but these ones have a light anise licorice kind of smell that's mixed in with the usual mushroomy undertones. It's a good indicator that you might actually want to eat these. These mushrooms are pretty light colored, so they could be Pleurotus pulmonarius, but since they're fruiting in November, I'm going to assume Pleurotus ostriatus. This species tends to like fruiting more in colder months, which we're definitely in right now. Either way, both would be edible. Another thing to note is that these oysters are fruiting on hardwood. It's a good habit to try to at least figure out what tree species they're growing on, since the potentially toxic look-alike angel wing mushrooms prefer conifer wood. Just something to watch out for. Apparently the Pleurotus gang is out in full force today, since here's Pleurotus dryness, the veiled oyster. It looks remarkably different from Pleurotus ostriatus, with its very distinct stem and round, almost lactarius or russula-like cap. The veiled oyster has a partial veil that covers the gills when the mushrooms are developing. After the caps open, you might still be able to see some remnants on the stem and cap. The edges of the caps may have some veil remnants or look a bit jagged and frayed. These ones don't really have much left on them, but you can usually find signs of it on the younger ones. These mushrooms are also covered in very small hairs, both on the caps and the stems. It's more like a fine velvet than a fuzz. You can sort of see that on the base here, along with some tiny beetle action. They seem to be enjoying themselves on this little patch of Pleurotus. These mushrooms start off clean and white, but they will turn more yellow as they get older. This old one I found I probably wouldn't eat, but these littler ones are fair game. One last thing to say about these is that in my experience, the stems are way too tough to eat. The caps have a nice firm texture when they're cooked, but the stems are pretty much unpalatable. So if you plan on eating these, maybe save the stems for stock, or just toss them off in the woods. Well, that was a lot of mushrooms. There were a ton of other mushrooms out today, but that was probably enough for now. Before you go, I'll leave you with this too, since I don't really know where else to show it off. I saw a bright orange little round thing, and thinking it was a mushroom, I ran up to it. Instead of a mushroom, it was the biggest spider I've ever seen. This is a marbled orb weaver. They're apparently pretty widespread, being found all over the northern hemisphere. It's still the first time I've seen a giant female like this, though. The females have huge abdomens with patterns on them. This one looks kind of like a Rorschach test of some sort. What do you see in it? And what does it say about me if I see a mushroom? Or maybe a really buff Pikachu? Probably nothing good. Alright, well that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little mushroom hunt. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask. And if you're interested in mycology, consider subscribing to stay up to date with my ramblings. Thanks for watching, and take care. Bye!